Hey everybody, it's Ridley back again. We're going to talk about the last of the value theorems for differential calculus. It's called the mean value theorem. You often see this as MBT. All right, <clears throat> and it's very simple. It actually makes a whole lot of sense. I'm going to yap a little bit about it um, before I actually write the theorem itself, but um, it pops up a lot. It's it's pretty helpful. Okay, and it, it's like I said, it's also very intuitive. All right, let me let's let's say that we go from A to B, and we take this, so this is going to be the point B, F of I don't know what that is, B F of B, and this is going to be the point A, F of A, and I draw a secant line from here to here. Now, <clears throat> do you agree that at some point between A and B? Along this curve, there probably is a tangent line. Let's see if I'm cruising along, cruising along, cruising along, and then all of a sudden right there, there appears to be a tangent line that is parallel to that secant line. <clears throat> there has to be, right? As long as, <clears throat> excuse me, as long as f of x is differentiable for all values. If it's not differentiable, all bets are off. We'll talk a little bit about what that looks like. All right, so all that we're saying is, is that the average rate of change of a function, of a differentiable function on an interval from A to B, is going to equal the instantaneous rate of change at some point. Now, let me put this in realistic terms. I live in Reno. If I want to drive to Tahoe, it takes me about an hour. Okay, so Tahoe is about 45 miles from my house. If I want to, if I want to spill out at one of the beaches at Tahoe, about 45 miles. It takes me about an hour. Which implies that my distance, my average, well, excuse me, my distance is 45 miles. My amount of time it takes me to get there is one hour. So I average about 45 miles an hour getting there. I'm going to speed up. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to stop. I'm going to have all, you know, hopefully I won't be going too fast and then get pulled over. Then it takes me a long time. But the average rate of change of my vehicle, if it takes me an hour and it's 45 miles an hour, or it's 45 miles away, is 45 miles an hour. Now, all that the mean value theorem says is that if my average rate of change is 45 miles an hour, then at least once, look, MBT doesn't make huge claims. It makes very simple claims. At least once, my instantaneous rate of change, in other words, the speed when I look down at my speedometer, has to be 45 miles an hour as well. At least once. Now, you may go in Ripley. It's got to do at least twice, right? Because you've got to go above it. And then you're going to start at zero, and you go above 45 miles an hour, and then, you go, then you're going to go below 45, hour, 45 miles an hour. Yeah, you're right, but MBT makes no, no such grandiose claims. It simply says, at least once, the instantaneous rate of change, which in this case, we would be talking about like my, my, my V of T, right, versus my, my average rate of change, if this, were, if this function were X of T, this would be the slope of the, I don't know why I put X of T on there, this would be my slope, this is m secant of x of t, they have to be the same. It's completely intuitive, right? <clears throat> okay, cool. So what I want to do is, excuse me, um, I, uh, let me give you the actual formal mean value theorem. Okay, it says suppose that f is diffable. Now, if it's diffable, if it's differentiable on a closed interval, Let's, let's make sure we understand what that means as well. We'll do this sort of parenthetically. We also know that it's continuous and limits exist everywhere. 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 We know that for sure. All right? Then this implies that, now let's think about this. It should be relatively simple. That, let's see, f of b minus f of a, which might over b minus a, which is my average rate of change, has to equal my instantaneous rate of change for some value on the interval from A to B. So how should we denote that? Well, we know that the instantaneous rate of change is F primed. I don't want to say A or B because I don't know that for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me, so we'll just call this F primed of C. For some C, for some C on the open interval from A to B. Somewhere in the interior of the open interval whoop, from A to B, there has to be a C such that F primed of C, so we'll call this guy right here, this is C if I mosey up here, all right, and I take the, I don't know why I have that, my V of T, then I know that the slope here, M tan, is equal to F prime 
That's C. And I know that those things have to be equal. That's it. <clears throat> that's all that ha that, that's there. Now, the <laughs> there's something called Rolle's theorem. Excuse me. Rolle's theorem is actually just, um, it's a very specific case of the mean value theorem. I'm just going to write it down here because it doesn't take very long. Rolle's theorem, which you may hear, so I want to make sure that I, I talk about it, says this. All right, if f of a equals f of b and f is diffable, diffable on closed interval from a to b. Now, let's think about that. Let's put that guy up here. All right, here. Ooh, that's terrible, but who cares? Let's go a. Here's B, and here's A, F of A, and here's B, F of B, right? They're, in other words, they equal one another. A, F of A, and this is B, F of B. Ta -da. Now, the function, it's differentiable, no spikes. If I got a spike, all bets are off, right? I mean, that's relatively obvious to see. If I've got a spike like that, and this is A, F of A, and this is B, F of B, and I want to look at this guy at no point, I mean, you should look at this and be like, oh, that's kind of like a, an absolute value. Yeah, absolute value is sort of the go-to non-differentiable continuous function. Clearly continuous, not differentiable. There's no value between A and B for which the derivative, because the derivative is either going to be the slope of this line or the slope of this line. It's never going to be the slope of that line. So that's why it has to be differentiable. All right, so let's go back to this Rolle's theorem example. If I've got a function, I don't know what it does. It could go whoop, it could go whoop, or it could go yahoo, like that. Well, that's not really a function, but you know what I'm saying. All right, it should be relatively obvious that if f of a equals f of b, and by the mean value theorem, this is a nice little extension, there has to be, there exists, uh, this implies f primed of c has to equal zero. It's got to for some c. For, for wow, for r, as in four. I've always wondered how that's spelled. I never really thought about that. I don't play golf. So is it F-O-R-E? Is it F-O-R? Is it F-O-U-R? Anyway, um, for some c on a-b, right? It has to. Just look at it. I know that if f of a equals f of b, then f of b minus f of a over b minus a is going to be zero which implies, by extension, whoop, there has to be some value, at least one value, for which uh, uh, the, the derivative at that value, there has to be a value of x for which the derivative at that value is equal to zero. That's rules. Now, I'm going to show you how to use this really quickly. It won't take too long. Let's keep it super simple. Let's, do, uh, let's let f of x equal x squared. And let's do this on the interval, on the interval from 1 to 3. Okay, so I'll draw f of x equals x squared from 1 to 3. Whoopoo, there it goes. This is y equals x squared. And then we'll call this 1, 2, 3. Well, we'll call this 3, right? So what I want to know is, let's change some colors here. Let's draw the, tan or the secant line right there. I want to know the value of, of x between 1 and 3 such that the first derivative at that value is equal to the slope of the secant line. So watch how easy this is. All you got to do, because you can get all, you can drive yourself crazy with this c, all right? I, I prefer to just ignore the c, let it be x, and then show that it's, the, that it's uh, between 1 and 3. I'll show you what I mean. All right, so the slope of the secant line is equal to f of 3 minus f of 1 over 3 minus 1 which is equal to 9 minus 1, right? Because 3 squared is, is 9 minus 1 squared is 1, divided by 2, and this is equal to 4, all right? And all I do is set that equal to the first derivative. So this, all this work, this, this, and this, is simply fulfilling that part, the slope of the secant line, is equal to f prime of x, which the derivative of, of x squared is 2x. Hey, guess what? Now, this this part right here whoop, is fulfilling this part. Now, it should be relatively obvious that x equals 2, which means that when x equals 2, let's put the difference here, we'll call this 2, and I go up to the curve, that the slope of the line tangent, I'm sorry that I crammed all that in for you guys, the slope of line tangent is equal to the slope of the secant line. 
right? Because the slope of the secant line was four, the slope of line tangent is four when x equals two. Clearly, two is an element of the open interval from one to three. Therefore, we have proven that the mean value theorem works for this particular function on this particular closed interval. Mean value theorem is very simple, but it's also super useful. I, I sort of liken it to uh, uh, the intermediate value theorem. It's so intuitive, you're like, duh, if you've got a continuous function, it's got to pass through every, every, between any two points, the function has to pass through every point. This is kind of the same thing, but, it, well, it's not the same thing as the intermediate value theorem, let's be clear, but it's, it's got that same sort of deep, intuitive feeling. You know what I mean? That intuitive understanding to it. And then you just you just got to practice using it. Now, notice that I didn't use C here and C here. Well, the C, this, is the C. All right? All that we're saying is there exists some X between A and B, some value of X. Now, we don't want to say, the reason that the theorem itself doesn't say X is because if it says X, that implies that it would equal, that these two slopes would be equal for every value between A and B. So they have to put spick, they have to pick a specific value, which they're just naming C. That's what we do in mathematics. We can't say that this equals f prime of x. That would be wrong. But we say f prime of C. Now, why did I say that it could equal f prime of x over here? Well, because I was going to solve for the x, which I knew to be C. This is a general comment about how the mean value theorem works. This is a very specific problem dealing with the mean value theorem. All right, that's enough of your time. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Hope this was pretty clear. Um, I'll see you in the next lesson.